folks, Summoner Wars is one of my favorite games. I love all the different factions, and I have everything in the game, all the way up to the very newly released Masters Alliance set. And I just think there's so many cool units in the game, and I love building the armies. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 champion units. Now, each deck has three champion units, and you can often pick if you have the reinforcement packs or the second summoners or the master sets. You can pick and choose which champions you want, or maybe stick some mercenary champions in. And sometimes you're like, oh, because the whole game seems to revolve around these champion units and the damage that they can do. What are my favorite champion units? Well, let me show you my top 10 champion units. This is disregarding my favorite faction, which is Jungle Elves, um, or my favorite armies. I'm just looking at them specifically as the champion unit. Before we get started, just realize I don't know how to pronounce any of these guys' names, so I'm just gonna guess. First, number 10, we have Rukar. Now, the reason I like him, first of all, he's a tough guy, you know, with six hit points and three strength, but when you attack with him, all die results of five or higher are counted as two hits, which means he can literally just kill almost anybody in one shot. He could effectively do six hits, which I just really enjoy. He is one of the most deadly champions to go after a summoner, take out other champions. Uh, he's expensive at seven, but I think very much worth it. Number nine is Wrath here. Now, this guy I like because of his movement ability. When you move him, instead of moving him normally, you can choose somebody who has one or more wounded markers on it, and he can go next to that chosen unit. Now, it has to be a common enemy, so a lot of common enemies are killed with one, mo uh, one wound. But still, if you can get a wound on your opponent, you can basically fly him across the board. Or, if one of your commons is chasing after your summoner, he can catch the guy very easily and do the final damage to take the guy out. And for five, I think he's a pretty good deal. Then we have Dagger. Champion of the Cloaks. I know, haha, <laughs> Cloak and Dagger. But I like Dagger because of the very thematic backstab. When he attacks an enemy unit, if he is closer to the back row of your opponent's side of the field than your unit he's attacking, he's plus three. Now basically that means if he's behind the opponent. But five attack? Now, the problem with Dagger is that when your opponent knows that he's coming for you, okay, he, he sees Dagger coming, He's going to do his best not to let Dagger get behind him and do whatever they can. But that is also going to distract him, and he'll be constantly watching Dagger, that possibility of five dice being rolled against you. So Dagger can be a very useful, and I think whenever I play Cloaks, I almost always use Dagger as one of my champions. Then Sybil here who is one of the more unusual people here, Champion of the Vanguards. She only has three hit points, but she cost eight. Well, first of all, a four ranged attack. That's amazing in and of itself. But also, when she gets wounds, she rolls a die, and there's a 50% chance she won't get the wound. Now, there's problematic that she doesn't, uh, it's harder for her to heal, especially with the vanguards who can heal people, but I don't think that matters as much. Again, your opponents, if they get lucky, can take her out quickly, but if they don't, she's a strong force to be reckoned with. And I just, I think that's such an interesting, I mean, first of all, it's fun to have this old lady who's moving around in the battlefield, but the fact of the four ranged attack, harder to wound her than normal, uh, which I guess essentially mathematically works out to maybe five wounds or maybe six wounds, and so she's probably worth the full eight, that it, and she's expensive, but uh, certainly one you want to take in your decks. Then we have Spider, who's a champion of the Cloaks. Now, uh, he's another one of those sneaky guys, but basically with him, if you can get him to the back row of your opponent, then you put him next to one of your walls, and then you wound your opponent's summoner. So if they're protecting their summoner, you can just run Spider to the back row, Take that, you know, give that wound to your opponent's summoner and keep going. Now, the fact that he's two range and has six hit points is fun, but you're going to distract your opponent. This is just like the other cloak, the, the dagger that we showed you. Your opponent's going to be watching Spider and trying to stop him from hitting that end line. And while they're doing that, you'll be able to sneak other units in. Just a great champion. Then we have Leah Goodwin. She does no damage, except... We add one for every two cards in the magic pile to a maximum of plus four. So you basically build her up. So a four attack is, can be pretty powerful. Now it's tough to sit on that sort of magic power. At the same time, she only costs three to bring out. 
and she's apparently carrying a, a, fan, a Final Fantasy sword for whatever reason. Um, but I really enjoy her because she doesn't look that threatening when she comes out. But the more enemies that are killed and your magic pile grows, a four attack for three, that's a pretty good deal. Then we have Sorgwen, I think, here. Another one that has only three hit points for a champion, but she's a three ranged attack. And at the end of your attack phase, you can pick a common unit that's within three spaces, and she can attack with that unit, even if they've already attacked. So basically, this gives you a chance, if you, especially if you get a good common unit with a strong attack out there, they can attack, she can go, and they can attack again. She's basically doubling someone else's attack. I almost think she's undervalued here for a cost of five, but then again, she's pretty easy to take out with only three hit points, and so you're going to want to defend her. Uh, but pretty cool character. Then we have Juju Gara, I think, from the Jungle Elves. Oh, I love this guy here because essentially you can choose any unit on the battlefield. Hyena, Rhinoceros, Lion, Elephant, Gorilla. All great common units. And he's treated as if he has the name and abilities of that unit. So he can attack twice. Or maybe move quickly. Or... Uh, oh, there's just so many cool special abilities. Now, you have to build the deck around this guy when you do that, so make sure that you have several of those characters in the deck. But essentially, it gives him kind of a variety as to his special abilities. Now, there's disadvantages. If those guys aren't on the board, he's not going to be as useful. But he still is a three attack with seven hit points, so still pretty powerful. Uh, but just, I really enjoy him, and thematically, just being able to use the spirit of these animals, it's something that's really fun to have in the game. Even better than him, and very similar, is Fink here. And another one with only three hit points. You think that I like the ones with low hit points. But I love the special abilities. Uh, three attack ranged, and at the beginning of his turn, he can choose any unit within three spaces. If they have any event abilities, he's also considered to have those until the end of your turn. So if anyone's near him with event abilities, which is something the Sand Cloaks have, he can copy them. Now he and the, I, I could have switched these two characters around, I think. I think Fink is a little bit more useful because of his three ranged attack, plus whatever special abilities of the people around him. At the same time, Juju Gara has much more health and can be somewhat of a tank that you can move on the board. So I, I could have rearranged him, but neither holds a candle to my number one guy, Guldoon. Guldoon uh, with the mind capture. A two range attack with four health isn't that great, but if you kill an enemy, common or champion unit, instead of giving them wounds with the killing blow, you can take control of them. Oh, that is so amazing. There are so many different characters in the game that you might want to do that to, uh, to capture, to take control of. Uh, your opponent is going to sit there and it's going to drive them nuts. They're going to definitely want to take Guldoon out while you're going to sit there and go, who do I want? Do you want to kill the small units and then just use them as a wave? This guy can single-handedly turn the game. Now, he's only five hip, he's only five cost because he's pretty easy to kill. And he will become the main target if he's out on the board. And he only does, two, he only does roll two dice, so it's going to be hard for him to kill. You have to soften him up with someone else first, some of the bigger characters. But the payoff can be really worth it, which makes him my number one. Well, there you go. Ten champion units. I'm doing two other videos that are being posted today. One of my top ten common units and then my top ten summoners. So I hope that you enjoyed those. This is a fantastic game. If you've never played it, certainly give it a whirl. Although I can't imagine why you would have watched this video anyway. But these are my favorite champion units. What are yours? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.